Let's talk Aljo versus O'Malley. With Sterling in this fight, he's kind of in an interesting position for my money. If you go back and look at his opponents he's faced on paper before the match, he seemed to be a bit outmatched. But here he's in a position where he's finally getting his due from most people and seemingly being a heavy favorite in this matchup. So right off the bat, I'm interested to see how he handles this. While it's on the feet, being on the front foot is going to be one of the more important things for Aljo, keeping his back facing the center of the octagon and tracking O'Malley down past the black line, trying to overwhelm him with the pace and the pressure. As of late, Aljo has shown some above average footwork, doing a great job switching stances, cutting angles, tracking his guy down, and finding his way back to the center if need be. And in this fight, it's going to be important for Aljo not to follow O'Malley in straight lines. I do think we're going to see a fair bit of kicks from Aljo to the body and the legs, on top of the double attacks with the hands and the feet, because O'Malley is a hard guy to track down and to crack to the head. But just like in most Aljo fights, I see a lot of his striking being used to set up the grappling, in which he's going to look to extend. Now, that's not to say Aljo can't strike with O'Malley, because Sterling definitely brings some unique and unorthodox techniques to the cage, but I don't think he's going to be looking to spend a bunch of time in the open mat with Sean, so I'd like to see Aljo faint, shuffle, and short step his way into boxing range while using his hands and feet to initiate some sort of grappling tie up. With Sean O'Malley in this fight, it's low hanging fruit to say he needs to keep it on the feet for him to have a chance, but how is he going to do that? For my money, his main tools are going to be his footwork his distance management, and his fakes and feints. O'Malley can thrive on the front or back foot, so it's not so much that that matters for him. What matters is dictating the pace and the engagements, while keeping the fight inside the black octagon line. While it's on the front foot, that's where he's going to have to try to throw loads of fakes and feints at Aljo to make him react, while breaking him down to all three levels to keep him guessing. While he's on the back foot, he's going to have to be a little bit more precise showing and picking his shots, but I believe taking a page out of Leon Edwards' book in the third Usman fight would be a great touch letting his back leg dictate the direction in which he moves while using the low kicks as Aljo plants and crashing with reactive knees and elbows. And my final point is going to be the fakes, feints, and setups. Of course, that's important in every fight, but with O'Malley, he has minimal room for error, but in the same breath, he has very creative movements and setups to pull Aljo into a trap. Two examples I can give you is the looks and shots down the barrel to set up O'Malley's round kicks, where Aljo has a weird tendency of not being in the greatest defensive positions at times and often to dip his head off drastically. And the second is going to be the looks and shots up the middle to not only discourage the takedowns, but also set up the high kicks as well. Overall, this is going to sound a bit silly, but hear me out. When you look at Aljo's last few opponents, in my opinion anyways, he was kind of at a stylistic disadvantage, but he was able to come up with the dub every time. But now when you look at it, he's fighting a fight where he's a pretty healthy favorite and seemingly at a stylistic advantage. But at the end of the day, I think these are the type of moments where styles are born. So I'm going to take O'Malley by turning his lights out. Let me know who you guys are taking in the comments below.